Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to alleviate some confusion about these upper ventilation boxes some of you are uh, excited about or thinking about this winter ventilation. Winter ventilation is really important. I can't stress it enough. You don't want wet bees. But the most important thing is having food on there in the winter time. Okay? These bees are very loud in there. You can see, you can see here they're already kind of getting Today we're going to move all the sensors down here to this hive and uh, getting late in the day I'm going to try to do it before it turns dark. I got two deeps here, I got a strong colony with a super on top and I'm just going to do it closer to where I'm working out of. I don't like walking all the way down there. It's snowy, it's cold, I'm going to try to get closer to my work. So anyway we're going to just actually uh, take this top off and hopefully we'll see some bees close to, into this super, the one down there. The bees were actually at only the bottom of that super and so we were getting some readings of humidity and temperature because the cluster was way down in that bottom deep. But hopefully this hive here, uh, sometimes when they're closer to the building here, they're a little bit larger in population. I don't know, but I know this is a real strong colony and I'm hoping they're so big that they filled up the super and I'm going to drop that winter be kind right here and we're going to show you I put a, a sensor right in the center of that candy board. This will allow us to measure the humidity that might be being absorbed in the candy board. And so we're going to just pop this top off, take a look. I want to share with you guys anytime you open up hives when it's cold, like right now I think it's a, just a little bit over freezing. Maybe it's 34 degrees, 32, right at freezing. Now, in my experience, it doesn't hurt to open a hive up very quickly under 60 seconds because, you know, the bees are warm and clustered together. Bees don't heat their houses like we do. Uh, oftentimes, the temperature is much colder like we experienced and saw in that other hive down there. Up in the super, temperature is just a hair above freezing, but down in the cluster, it's 92 degrees. Same here. They're just heating each other, if you think of it that way. Now, we'll have a little bit of a heat loss, but it doesn't matter to them. To them. A lot of hives uh, are so tightly clustered, and it's not real windy here, and we're not going to have the top off for maybe less than 15 seconds. Just time to put the winter be kind on. So it's not going to be a lot of loss. Now, whenever you do this, I want to warn you, you need to have a hat and a veil on because bees, even though it's cold, they can actually, you know, they're warm in there. They might actually fly and sting you in the face and the nose or something. So always, even in the wintertime, when you think everybody's in there and asleep or cold and can't move, <laughs> they can move and you're going to find out the hard way you should have had a hat and a veil. Now, should you smoke them? Yeah, it's a good idea to do it the traditional way, crack the top, smoke, set it back down, let the smoke run the bees down. I'm not going to do that because I want to see where the bees are. I don't want to smoke them down. I want to see how far down they are in this super here. Now, it doesn't really matter. This honey super here, they're going to use it uh, for food, but they may be so far down, maybe even the bottom deep, that it's going to be uh, middle of the winter before they get up here. So we'll see how long it's going to take them, and it'd be mine and your little experiment, how long will it take this hive to start eating this winter be kind, and what's the humidity going to do? Now, also, I want to share that when you put a winter be kind on, if you've ordered a winter be kind from me, we are starting, you might be able to see through there, people are actually working in there, but we are starting to ship some of these in colder areas. When you get yours, they're a little wet when you get them. That's how they're designed. They need to be uh, soluble for the bees to consume them. Don't worry about that. If there's moisture, water, little uh, wetness in the bag, that's perfectly normal. Put them on your hive. The bees will love that uh, moist sugar water. But when you put them on here, the bees may not consume them right away. It may take them a little bit of time to get up there. I've noticed sometimes bees will eat through their honey super first before they eat the winter be kind. And then I've noticed they're about the same amount of hives will eat the winter be kind first and sometimes never even touch their honey super till later on. They kind of like, eh, why would we want to eat our own food when we have this free food up here? Let's just save that for later. So you never know what bees are going to do. A lot of times bees will eat that winter be kind in such a way that in my earlier years of doing some trial work, I noticed the bees will break off some of that 
uh, candy and actually drop it down onto the cluster so the cluster can consume it, like they're feeding the other bees by getting that candy. Uh, there's not much distance between the candy and the top frame. It doesn't hurt anything. I've had the whole candy sheet uh, dislodge and, and just sit on top of those um, top frames and that's perfectly fine. Bees will consume all of that. It will all be consumed. But we're going to go ahead and get in this hive and see what we can do today. Join me. Yeah, as you can see, here's the candy board. I just poured this about an hour ago. I usually let them sit overnight, but a couple of reasons I want to put this on here is because I want to make this video. <laughs> and the other reason is uh, this is a good day to put it on right now. And uh, But anyway, you can see right now it shows that we're at 42% no, 42 degrees, thought it was colder than that out here. And the outdoor humidity is right at, that's showing barometric pressure, 58% humidity. So I've got my hat and gloves on. Um, I see, I thought I saw a bee go by, but you know, at this temperature, uh, it's not unusual for bees to kind of be flighty. This, by the way, uh, 42 degrees, I think is the most perfect temperature for bees to be in here. They don't really consume a lot of food when they're at 42. Uh, they're, you know, partially clustered if they're uh, a reasonably sized hive. They're not uh, tightly clustered at that temperature, but they are kind of asleep. They're not sleeping, but they're kind of asleep. So anyway, my, uh, my wondering about when I pop this off, if we're going to see, you know, a lot of bees right off the top there or if we're just going to see them further down. Uh, either way, it'll be what it is, okay? I don't see any bees up there. Boy, I hear them. Wow. All right. Let's go ahead and put this on. It's not a big deal. I was kind of hoping the bees would be up here, but they are clustered down. We don't want to spend too much time with it open like this. There we go. We got it sealed off now. We got this on top. Now this would be a good little test to see how long will it take for the bees to decide to come up and eat that. Again, they're they're nicely clustered down here. They're not even in the super at all that I could tell. And so we can at least start getting some readings on what we're getting as far as the moisture level up here. Uh, because we do have the, the winter bee kind vent hole right there that's going to be expelling excess moisture. Just set the winter bee kind in uh, about 30 minutes ago so you can see temperature is 41 and uh, I actually brought the sensor in that winter bee kind from indoors. I thought it was 40 degrees but outside but it's actually uh, 28 degrees outside right now with a humidity of 92%. And as you can see, up around the center of the winter bee kind, uh, we're sitting right at 61% humidity and 41 degrees at the top of that super that's on that hive. Look at that. It's 62 degrees there by the winter bee kind. Makes me wonder if the bees are up on it now. Not sure. 64% humidity and 92 outside on the humidity. But 62 degrees up from 40 is 20 degrees hotter at the winter be kind uh, about two hours later. I tell you, if it wasn't for my nice heated vest, I would be so cold right now. I have fallen in love with this vest. I don't know if you get a little bit older, it's harder to stay warm or you get colder more easily. But this has these heat heater coils around my neck and all through the chest and back. And the pockets are heated. This little red light means that I just turned it on before I came out here and it's not at full uh, energy yet. It'd be full hot here in a minute. And then it turns white. And I've, I've been running this thing, you know, I wear this in the house sometimes, even when I'm just sitting around, I'm a little cool or something, I'll put this on to just kind of warm me up. Sherry, sometimes uh, she's cold nature. Now I'm from the South, you know, hey, I got, I got Southern blood, I guess, but Sherry's like sometimes sitting around with a, the heater, you know, we got our furnace on heating our house, but she'll sit down and either sit on or have a heated blanket over the top of her, <laughs> even though the house is like 68 or 70 degrees. So we like it hot. <laughs> so I love this thing and it turns white when it gets up to full power. And you can adjust this like hot, medium, low, 
and I keep her hot. I keep it full blasting. And I, like I said, I can run it about six hours and stay pretty warm on it. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you guys want to check into this on Amazon. Not promoting it. I don't know the company. I just know that I've had it for a while and it works great. I love it. It, it really does. does help me out like when I'm out here filming with you guys like this. You know, we, we're having a lot of fun playing with bees. And I think we're all like citizens. My hair is getting wet from the snow. I think we're all citizens, scientists. We all like to tinker. And I think it's cool to do that. I, I, I hope all of you have fun watching me tinker with stuff. And I know some of you are scientists and you're entomologists and you spend your whole life studying bees and you have uh, very expensive uh, state-funded bee labs that you work in and all. And I wish I had that kind of money to do that kind of stuff. I don't. Um, I am a master beekeeper, but a lot of the stuff I have to do, I have to do on a shoestring budget. And, and I don't have, you know, a million colonies that I can have a bunch of graduate students uh, help me out and do all this work. It's just me. <laughs> me and a tripod. <laughs> so I hope you guys like that. I hope you're okay with that. That's just the way it is on my channel here. I just try to, I just try to play with bees and learn stuff, do stuff like I'm doing today, and, and I share it with you guys. And, hey, sometimes it's a flop. It's like, dang, that didn't work. <laughs> that was stupid. I was like, wow, why did I do that? And uh, sometimes it's like a aha moment. You're like, whoa, that was that was pretty insightful. I'm kind of, I'm I'm pumped about that. So, pretty excited about those kind of things. <laughs> so what's really cool is we're getting so many subscribers and we're just narrowing it down. Look at this number here. We have top 99,500. I mean, we're on the home stretch. Woo! That's great. YouTube even notified me and told me that my views are up 67% on my recent videos that I've been making. The ones about moisture in the hive and all. Hey, that's all you guys doing that. Thank you so much. I love you guys. You're awesome. Now, if you haven't watched these videos that I've been doing on moisture testing in the hives and all, I'll take you all the way back to the first one I did. Maybe you've seen it, but in case this is your first time to watch this one, back up a few more videos and you'll see the one right here where I start this whole process of kind of monitoring humidity in the hive. I'll see you over there.